Hi there, and welcome to Intermediate Bird Identification. I'm Leanne Lachmoy from Birds Canada here in Saskatoon. This video was made in part to support participation in the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas, a citizen science project that aims to determine the status and distribution of birds at nest across the province. With that, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be covering grouse and their allies, as well as pigeons and ducks. The focus will be on adult birds that nest in Saskatchewan, but many of these species can be found across the prairies and indeed in much of the rest of Canada too. So grouse and their allies. These are all very much chicken-like birds. Um, they've got short, powerful legs and stout bills. Much like domestic chickens, you're going to be finding these birds primarily as they walk around on the ground. They, they can't absolutely fly and they do sometimes perch in trees depending on the species and the habitats you're finding them in. Um, but again, these birds very much kind of chicken-like in their shape and their habit of walking about and pecking at the ground. So let's start with the ruffed grouse. This is a medium-sized grouse and it's got a fairly prominent crest right up on its head right over here. Um, the sexes are similar. They're both intricately patterned and modeled, um, and they have a background of kind of gray or rusty colored. There's a dark band across the tip of the tail, and there's bold dark markings on the flanks right on the side right here. Those are going to be helpful for identification features when you're um, comparing them to other, you know, mottled brown chicken-like birds. Um, males are a little bit larger and they do have a more extensive ruff as you can see down in this photo here. This is a male in display mode, um, but outside of displaying they're actually quite difficult to tell apart. Um, what's cool about these birds is that displaying males will fan out their, fail their tail feathers and they'll you know kind of puff up their ruff. They'll also do this thing where they beat their wings to make a deep drumming sound and most of you have probably heard this before. It goes thump, 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 thump. And it's one of those so sounds that travels really far and you almost, you know, you feel it more than you hear it. What's cool about that is the bird is beating its wings so fast that it actually creates a mini vacuum of air. And the sound you're hearing is the air kind of whooshing back into that void space, making a miniature sonic boom. So that's pretty cool. Um, you'll find these birds in aspen stands and in the boreal forest. A similar looking bird is the spruce grouse. This is another medium sized grouse. They're, they're fairly similar in size. He's got a very limited crest, however. You can, oops, you can see that in the female over here, just not a, not a very prominent crest. So males and females do differ in the species. Males are very intricately patterned with a really distinct black patch on their throat um, and their tail is black with yellowish tips. Females are intricately patterned on a gray or rusty background and there's strong barring on the breast and belly as opposed to the flanks of the ruffed grouse. So you see this nice barring right here on the breast and belly. So barring in the front, you've got a spruce grouse. Barring on the sides, you've got a ruffed grouse. Um, both sexes do have red combs, um, which can be hidden, and they're definitely more prominent in breeding males. And this is a species that you are likely to encounter in the boreal forest. Sharp-tailed grouse is another medium-sized grouse, and as the name would suggest, they've got a tapered tail with a long central tail feather and a short crest. Again, sexes are similar. Um, they're both cryptically colored, mottled buff and brown, and on the breast and belly there's going to be these dark chevrons, these little V markings that you see, see right here on the breast and belly. Um, breeding males have really nice yellow combs and violet air sacs that they inflate for their displays. And this is a lecking species, so male gather, males gather at these prominent sites to display and fight for the favor of females. Only a few males are actually successful in mating and these birds are highly social outside of the lecking season so you'll see them in large groups. You'll find these birds in grassy and shrubby areas. So let's take a look and compare these three species side by side shall we? So we've got the sharp tail which got that nice pointed central tail feathers and those chevrons on the breast. It's got a little bit of a crest on the top of its head the ruffed grouse, on the other hand, has bold dark barrings on the flanks. So again, that's the side of the bird right down here. And it's got a quite prominent crest. Now, as with any um, crest or most bird feathers, um, you know, depending on 
how the bird is holding them, this crest can be quite flattened down or it can be quite um, prominent. So keep that in mind, but if you do see a really big crest, um, chances are you've got a rough grouse, but always look for other clues as well. On your spruce grouse, you've got that strong barring on the breast and belly, and you've got a rather limited crest in general. So those are those three species side by side, and hopefully next time you see a mottled brown grouse looking bird, you're going to be more prepared to figure out exactly which one it is. Now, moving on to the larger end of things, we've got the greater sage grouse. This is quite a quite a hefty bird, and it's got a large bill compared to other grouse, so it takes up, you know, relative proportion. It's got a large heavy bill um, relative to the rest of its head. The male has a distinctive white breast and a rather spiky tail, and it's got a black throat and belly. During a display, it will fan out its tail and inflate these really lovely yellow air sacs. Females are a little bit more plain, and they're generally kind of mottled gray with a distinct black belly as well, but they're missing that great big throat patch and all of the other obvious decorations that the male has. Um, this is another lecking species which will display. Um, and these birds are endangered in Canada. And you'll find them in the extreme southern portions of the prairies uh, where they are dependent on sagebrush. Ring-necked pheasant is a fairly large bird as well. It's got a very long pointed tail, um, and both sexes show this, although the male has a much longer, more prominent tail. The males are very boldly colored with a white neck ring and a red facial skin. Um, and, you know, think really decorative chicken when you see these birds. Um, females are buffy with dark spots and bars and a plain breast. Um, you'll find these birds in cultivated areas, especially those with ditches and windbreaks. And they were successfully introduced in the late 1800s, um, so they're not a native species. So that's the ring-necked pheasant. Again, that really, really long tail um, is a dead giveaway for this species in both sexes. The gray partridge, or Hungarian partridge, is a small partridge which is portly and chicken-like. It's got a short, stout little bill and the sexes are similar in this species. They're gray-brown overall with a rusty spot on the belly, which is more developed in males, but also present on the females, and it's got these lovely rufous barring on the flank. It's got a nice little orange face as well, and it's got a short rusty tail. The short rusty tail is actually really helpful for identification features when the bird is flying off, so if you see a small um, grouse-like bird that's taking off and it's got a short, very rusty colored tail, you've got yourself a gray partridge. These birds are found in groups outside the breeding season called coveys, and you'll often see them in cities and towns in the winter in those groupings. Otherwise, you will find them in cultivated areas and grasslands with hedgerows. They were successfully introduced in the early 1900s. Moving on to pigeons and doves. These are medium-sized birds with stout builds. They have very rounded heads and kind of thin little straight bills. The sexes are similar and all of these birds do forage heavily on the ground. They're strong fast flyers. Um, you'll often mistake them for a falcon as, a, as you see them just coming out of the corner of your vision because they do have such a strong powerful flight um, that happens to me all the time. And they're actually rather noisy in flight if you've ever flushed a bunch of pigeons, um, you'll know that they make all those kind of wing beat noises. And overall, they kind of have a variety of cooing noises that they make. So the rock pigeon, also known as the rock dove or feral pigeon, this is a large pigeon, um, rather stocky. It's got a very variable plumage because it's been bred in captivity for so many years. Um, you can get all kinds of different variation. So the the pigeon we have up here is kind of the most typical form, and that's closer to the, the wild form in its native range. Um, but again, we do see all kinds of other variations. Um, you see reds, whites, blacks, and kind of everything else in between. There are some breeds um, that are domestic that are, you know, fancy pigeons, and those guys have all kinds of ridiculous plumages. I encourage you to go look up fancy pigeons um, if you're curious afterwards. Um, these guys form flocks, and so you'll often see them hanging out in groups in cities and farmyards. Um, again, these are really familiar if you've ever been to a city or a farmyard, um, and they like to gather in groups there. These guys were introduced in the early 1600s, so they have been around for a while in North America. Um, the males, when they're doing this display, they'll kind of puff up their, their chest feathers and um, 
do this little dance around a female. So it's actually really hilarious to watch. And that's our familiar rock pigeon. Next up, we've got the morning dove. This is a medium sized dove, so it's gonna be a little smaller than, the, than our pigeon over there. Um, it's got a long pointed tail, and it's the most delicate dove pigeon that we, dover pigeon that we have here. It's this kind of buffy tan color overall with dark spots on the wing and a little dark patch on the cheek that is usually visible, but depending on the way the bird is holding its feathers, you might not actually see it. Um, this bird is really common in open and brushy habitat. So again, it's got that long, pointed tapered tail which you can really see in flight and those dark spots on the wing and sometimes that little cheek patch. Similar looking is the Eurasian collared dove. This is a large dove um, closer to closer to the size of a rock pigeon. Um, it's got a long squared off tail and it's kind of it's more pale buffy gray overall so it's going to look paler than your morning dove is and um, as the name should suggest there's a dark collar on the back of its neck so that stands out um, quite prominently and you can see that tail fanned out um, from the undersides it's quite heavily marked black and white and again rather squared off you're missing that taper of the morning dove these guys are increasingly found in cities and towns in saskatchewan um, it seems like wherever they're able to survive the winter um, they start hanging out there um, but interestingly enough, these are birds that we don't really find in the bigger cities. They tend to prefer the smaller cities and towns. These were only introduced in the Bahamas fairly recently in the 1970s, and they have made their way across um, large parts of North America. <clears throat> Comparing the two doves side by side, we've got the morning dove with that long tapered tail and those dark spots on the wing, and the Eurasian collared dove with its squared off tail and that dark collar around the neck. And you can see here, it's missing those dark spots on the wing. And the color is a little bit different, um, but you know, that's one of those subtle things that as you gain more experience, you're gonna um, perhaps get a bit more comfortable with, but color is always tricky because depending on the lighting that you're viewing the bird in, um, color, especially subtle differences, can be difficult to pick up on. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. At Birds Canada, we're always happy to help you learn to identify birds and have citizen science programs for all skill levels. Visit our website at birdscanada.org or follow us on social media at Birds Canada to learn more or get involved. If you have any questions or comment about the video, you can reach out to us at skatlas at birdscanada.org. And lastly, do check out the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas website at sk.birdatlas.ca and follow us on Facebook where we post links to workshops and other training opportunities. Thanks again and happy birding!